Hey gang, it's Wes. What's a long time no talk? I know, I know, I know, that's on me. Um been real busy with Warhammer. Woot! Um but also with Varia, the, the collectible card game, trading card game. I'm gonna leave a link to both of these things uh down at the bottom of the of the video. But been real busy with client work, which is a great problem to have. Uh, but I've missed you guys. I've missed doing the YouTube video and stuff. But we got a doozy of a uh, of a topic today. So I do want to read something real quick. This kind of sets up the whole scene. And plus, if you see the title of the video, you know what this is about. But on our um, Patreon, um, we, we have a Discord. And we have the central places where just patrons can ask questions. Whether it's industry questions or like, Anything from, hey, how do you do this technique to like, oh, I have a client, but what should I charge? Like stuff like that. So I try to give guidance and we all kind of talk shop. It's big, open. Everyone asks everybody questions. But there's a question that's come up. And literally one of these questions, uh, a follow up to this came up about eight minutes ago. <laughs> of like once I, I was about to hit record and then uh, good pal Camillo Brzezinski, he came in and uh, ask something too. But let me let me talk about this real quick. So I'm going to uh, open this. This is a uh, so awesome artist, uh, Adam, uh, we call him Augie on the uh, on the patron discord. But we, uh, on, on the patrons only chat, we talk about different programs and stuff that we use, right? And we're talking about the pros and cons. And you know, we hear about this. Has anyone used this? What do you think about it? Uh, but I want to read this verbatim because I think this is very important and I think it's a great way to get your head around it. Um, let me, let's see. Okay, so uh, Augie, uh, Adam says, I love the brush presets and uh, the way the program works, which he's talking about Krita. Um, I'm also a big fan of Clip Studio Paint, but I find it more useful for sketching than painting. The brush engine creation tool for some reason just doesn't vibe with me very well. Then there's GIMP, which feels like a Photoshop, but a lot less bells and whistles, more towards favoring photos and vector art. Just haven't messed with it much, uh, much less Critter or Clip Studio. Possibly a good idea for a video when you get the time. The different programs in your arsenal and what you enjoy most about them or how you use them in different ways. And then Camillo Brzezinski, like eight, nine minutes ago, literally came in and said, Hey, Wes, do you have any idea of what Clip Studio Paint is? <laughs> and I replied, yes, I do. I sure do. So this is going to be kind of a long one. We're going to look at my entire 2D arsenal, uh, kind of what I use in the toolbox for professional work, private work, client work, um, commission stuff. And we're just going to talk a little bit about them, how they feel, what they're really good for, what the strengths, maybe some weaknesses. That way, I mean, there's a lot to go around. There's a lot of stuff to look at. Uh, so this one might be a long one, but I hope you find some really useful information. Uh, but grab you a snack. I got my coffee right here. I'm going to go grab some candy or chocolate or something. But let's take a look at our entire 2D arsenal. Um, yeah, let's get started. All right, guys. Welcome. Settle in. Hope you got something good to eat. To drink all that stuff uh yeah we're gonna take a look at the stuff that i use but before we get started on this um let me get the big camera so you know it's serious business uh you're you, if you're watching other youtubers if you have some other tutorials from other artists they may have a different mindset on this topic in general a lot of people are very much uh hey learn one program learn the in and outs really deep dive in all of them and on a lot of criteria like that, I agree. Uh, really find the one that fits your style the best. However, there's no real way to do that unless you experiment with multiple ones. Something to keep in mind as well, the, the, the art of making art, I guess, uh, the, the process of making art is part of it. And it, it, I, I can't remember where I heard this. I think it was with a, it was a, interview with with somebody but they brought up a great great point that that creating art like the whole process and work of it is not math you're not following a formula necessarily now there's rules you can use but you're not following the formula it's jazz how does it what's the feeling what's the vibe what's the essence of what you're going after 
And that's really what I'm going to talk about with a lot of this. Uh, but let's dig in. Let's figure out kind of what we got. I got my desktop right here. So this entire top layer is basically what I use, not on a daily basis because I'll flip flop. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at each program pretty quickly. Talk about the the whole gamut of what they can do, what their pros are, maybe what the cons are. Um, just my personal preference, my personal take on all these. But something very important is at the end, I think me and a lot of my art friends, especially on the Discord, uh, are kind of going through the same sort of existential crisis in regards to Photoshop. So I want to talk a little bit about that as well. But let's get started. Um, let's start with Photoshop. Okay, so or actually first, let me let me read these off. So what I use, what I have uh, bought and tried out and stuff like that is Paintstorm Studio. Adobe Photoshop, this is an older version that I got back in college, uh, CS6. Uh, then we got uh, Krita, Clip Studio Paint, Sketchbook, Affinity Photo, Art Rage. There's Metabang Paint, Flame Painter, which actually is more, I'm going to put it like down here. Because Flame Painter, um, it, it's helpful, but it's really good for like special effects, doing card art, things like that. Flame Painter is pretty great. Um, but then Rebel. Um, and then, of course, you have Pure Ref. Pure Ref can be used with everything. It's its own standalone thing to drag and drop references, which is always good. Um, and then I'm making, spoiler alert, making some ebooks right now um, that are going to be very affordable and pretty cool. Uh, some world building stuff, and I use InDesign. Once again, CS6. I had to buy that whole package, which was a lot of money back then. So I keep it around. <laughs> um, we're not going to look into 3D. 3D can be a different video. I don't use 3D a, a ton right now, but I like to learn it just to know it. Uh, but this is this is kind of my gamut. This is my arsenal, my toolbox, as it were, for, for programs. So let's take a look. Um, let me load up Photoshop. So Photoshop's kind of the elephant in the room because now if you're wanting Photoshop, it's subscription only. So I think you can get a version of Photoshop for about 10 bucks a month. Uh, I think it comes with Photoshop and maybe, is it Lightroom that it comes with? It's called like the photography suite, which I mean, Photoshop, that, that's sort of what its bread and butter is, is editing photos. So Throughout this whole spectrum, something that I'm going to talk about is the difference between painterly and mechanical. And I think the baseline for mechanical is going to be Photoshop. And what I mean by mechanical is whenever I get into Photoshop, I learned it as a graphic designer. I learned it as someone who does web development or did web development, I should say. And it's... It, it's it's been around for a long time. It is the standard. If you're going to work in a studio environment, the odds are pretty good they're going to have you work with Photoshop simply because Adobe has a different programs like Adobe Bridge. You have Premiere. You have After Effects. Uh, you have InDesign. You have all these things that like work well with a workflow. That way, you also have the Creative Cloud. People can uh, upload stuff to like an enterprise version of the Creative Cloud. You can pull that stuff out, maybe do revisions of it, almost like a GitHub. Pretty cool. But you'll notice... I didn't really talk about painting yet. <laughs> so it's been around for a long time. I do make brush packs. I use brush packs all the time on, um, so let me go here, uh, 1500. Let's do that. Uh, Phil, let's, so I have used, I mean, CS6 is probably what, 15 years old now? No, maybe not that old, maybe like 10-ish years old. But in, in Photoshop, language that's ancient okay whenever i'm getting into photoshop it's the standard everybody uses it all my heroes used it so i was like i gotta learn how to paint in photoshop i just have to do it and so right now i'm using kind of my platinum brush pack uh let's get in here we're gonna do here and there's um a lot of let me get on my art glove there's a lot of cool add-ons you're gonna see that i have um colorist or colorist or um, however you want to pronounce it. It's a great way to uh, manage my colors. Um, you know, if I want like complementary colors, if I want triadic, if I want, um, yeah, um, tetradic. So I want something like this to make sure that 
all these colors work well together. Um, it also has cool mixer tools, color sliders, different adjustment things. Um, but if you're if you're just getting started, a lot of this stuff. One Coloris is you have to buy it extra, and it's an add-in. Um, it's kind of mechanical. That a lot of this is based on math. So I mean, I have used Photoshop, and it is the standard. I know it. I I do love it. It's a love hate thing. But something that I I notice with it is one it actually even cs6 which is a blazing fast version of this thing comparatively to the new stuff um it it's still kind of slow like it has to catch up with itself a little bit um especially if you get into stuff like mixer brushes which i do love i love the mixer brush um it's a beautiful brush that can actually uh give different options dry heavy load uh, things like that. So if I want to do like a, a light mix with a moist brush, um, I can come in and I can do that. And you can see how it's starting to interact with the stuff around it. And then each one of these brushes works slightly different. So it's like smeary. You get some really cool stuff. So over the course of the years, Photoshop has really become kind of a staple. It is a standard. Um, however, I think it is very stampy and what that means is let me get pitch black here let me clear this out let me make this black so the way all of these engines work so not just photoshop but all of them work is you have a picture that acts as a stamp now these stamps can have different properties but as i make this bigger you can see the shape right um and then if i click once that's what the stamp looks like. Oh, wait, let me get back to the actual brush because the mixer brush isn't going to show it very well. Um, but once again, so if we have this, so there can be variances, there can be uh, changes, there can be jitter, there can be a lot of different brush options you can alter in here. So if I uh, come into here, uh, brush, so yeah, you have shape dynamics, dual brushes, transfer, smoothing. You have all these options you can do on these brushes, but you're going to see color dynamics is on here on these Greg Grakowski style brushes. Um, the texture you can add as an image. Um, yeah, so you have a lot of this stuff right here, which you can go and you can make a field day of it. But at the end of the day, these are stamps. And if you put them back to back to back to back to back, that is a brush stroke. You see what I mean? So I can never, for whatever reason, shake that feeling that this is stampy. It is as much as uh, I like the mixer brush, as, as much as I like different tools like, um, like your gradient tools and pattern stamp tools and things like that. I I can never shake the feeling that I'm trying to make it look like a painting instead of just painting. And that for me, the more I'm getting into working on the pro stuff and on that side of the coin, I'm starting to realize that I want the path of least resistance. And you know, I made these brushes. I sell these brush packs and I love them. I, these are my go-to. Um, of course, if you look at my brush sets, I have Ahmed Eldori stuff, Aaron Griffin, Anthony Jones, a Darkin, Derek Zabrocki, um, Flat Traps, Richard Anderson, uh, Greg Rakowski, you got James Jones, you got John Park, Kike Kataki, uh, you got uh, Dave Raposa did some stuff, uh, Paul Canavan, of course, you got Sparth, Wadam Kashin, uh, uh, Wolchdek, you got all these people making kick-ass brush packs, and I love them. I love to buy them. I love to play around with them. And, oh, man, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? At the end of the day, I always feel like I'm thinking too much about my brushes. Does that, does that make sense? Which is not a bad thing. It, I, like I said, I've used it for a long time. It, it is fun to use, to kind of experiment and do that. But once again, it's kind of mechanical. There's options you can do in getting the feel right. And we I haven't talked about it here, but I feel the same way about Photoshop that I do Procreate. Now, a lot of people make amazing brush backs and beautiful stuff for Procreate. 
I can't use it very well because it's very, it feels rigid to me. It feels, this feels like I'm making a graphic design assignment to look like a painting. Now that could just be me in the way that I learned Photoshop, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think that there, there might be something to that, but anyway, um, I do recommend Photoshop. If you can get it, if you want to try it out, try it. You may fall in love with it. If you're a big fan of Procreate, if you like the fact that you would have legitimate total control over every pixel all the time, uh, histograms and channels and you know, all the alphas and all that stuff, go for it. Now I will say, Matte painting, if you're into matte painting, if you're into using uh, photography, uh, photo bashing, stuff like that, you cannot get any better than Photoshop. Since it's made with photos, Photoshop, it's going to handle photography and the editing and matching color incredibly well. Like, there's a, there's a secret sauce. Let me open up two things real quick. Let me open up, here's a desktop. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this Randy Vargas piece a lot because I love Randy Vargas. And uh, <laughs> this is my favorite Magic the Gathering painting ever. And that dude's a freaking rock star. So let's say I have this and I'm also making, let's do, let's bring in, ba -ba -ba -ba, let, let's look at my Xander Zorn study that I did, okay? Uh, now I did this in Paintstorm Studio. But let's say I want this. To have the colors of this. I don't know why, but let's just say. If I go back to my Zorn study, check this out. If there's an edit, this is, if you're a matte painter, this is your secret sauce. If you go to image and you go to adjustments, down here you're going to have something called match color. Now, under here, under source, you can pick what you want to take the colors from. So what this does is this overlays, this kind of enhances and puts in the color of the piece that you're looking at into uh, your, your, your starting canvas or whatever. Now, it works better if you have a, an image that has way more kind of color going on than what I have right here. But you'll see right now, you can also fade in, fade out. So this is useful, like if you have two environments and you want one of the environments to match the colors, like if you got two different pictures of mountains and you want them both to be the cooler blues and one of them is cool blue, but the other one's kind of a warmer thing, you can get the warmer one and then match the color of the cooler blues. It's not exact, but it's closer. Um, but once again, algorithm. This is an algorithm. This is, this is uh, you know, it's, it's math. This is using math which is great. If you're looking at matte painting and you need stuff to be exact, done. You got it. But painting the more expressive, hoity-toity, flowy, oh, what does it all mean, man? That, that is more about feel. And I just, no matter how hard I try, no matter how many brushes I make, no matter how many things I do, I can't get the feel of paint on a canvas in Photoshop. I just can't. It breaks my heart. I want it to so bad. I want this to be my one and only. I feel bad. I'm like rubbing the screen like Wolverine rubs the photo album. Photoshop, I want to love you. I want to so bad, but it just, I don't know. Anyway, that's Photoshop. Um, now, let's work kind of in order. So if we're going mechanical, let's go from mechanical to painterly. So let's go from mechanical, something that's very math-based, uh, algorithmic, stampy, whatever. And we'll work our way towards a program that works exactly like if you gave me a canvas. Here, let me. Bam. If you gave me a canvas and you uh, said, hey, I need you to do a painting. Here's some open acrylics. Here's some oils. Need it with this. Use a Zorn palette. Uh, you know, limited range, whatever. Uh, you got a few hours. What are you, you going to use? We're, that's painterly. That's, that's going to be that end of the spectrum. So right now we're at that mechanical side. Um, the next one on the list is Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo is Photoshop. <laughs> but instead of paying a subscription per month, it's a one-time payment of 50 bucks. I'll tell you what. If you want to dabble in Photoshop's mathematics and the algorithms and gradient overlays and all these different filters and effects, 
get affinity because it's $50 one time you get updates for life and the brush engine is better. I know I'm going to get some hate mail for that one, but lately I, I literally updated this at like 2 AM last night. Um, I hadn't used affinity in a long time and I was like, well, if I'm going to talk about this stuff, I might as well. And now I'm starting to feel it, man. Like affinity, what you doing, Bubba? Like, um, doing some cool stuff, man. So let me come over here. Now I will say this works a little bit slower than, uh, a little bit slower than Photoshop does, but it's still pretty good, man. It's still good. Um, so paint mixer brush, color replacement brush. There's a gradient tool. Um, let's see what's over here. So I'm still kind of learning the ropes about affinity, but let's just go to standard paintbrush tool. Um, you're going to see there's a lot of built-in stuff. One thing to keep in mind, you can import ABR. Uh, so you can import Photoshop brushes. So you see I got the Darken brushes, Ahmed Aldori, Jama Jurabev. Now, you're going to have to do some adjustments because it's not a one-to-one -one transfer. But it gets the brush tip in. It brings in some of the dynamics, some of the fluidity, um, the flow, things like that. But you might have to go and tweak it depending on what your setup is. Uh, I'm using a, a Huion, um, kind of the, the touch panel um, version that they have. I think it's the night. No, it's a 21 inch, something like that. Anyway, um, so, you know, your mileage may vary, but it also has built in like gouache brushes that you just pick it. You can pick from the list that they have, um, has kind of like built in assistance. Like, Hey, we see what you're doing. So we made a new rasterize layer. That way you can, uh, kind of just keep working. Um, so each of these brushes, of course you can change the properties, but it's still stampy. It's still very stampy. But it's comparable to Photoshop in regards to how that stuff plays. Um, and you're going to notice it has this cool little color palette here. You can also, of course, do your standard uh, color picking. You can do your different filters. Uh, has your layer set up almost exactly the same way that Photoshop does. Um, you can have your histograms. You have all these math stuff. You can have a mesh warp tool. You can have artistic text, uh, your shape tool, ink pens, blenders, brushes, smudges. I mean, what you, what you got in Photoshop, it's set up very much the same way. So this is almost the one-to-one -to, -one to Photoshop, in my opinion. Um, it probably doesn't have all of the features of Photoshop, but enough good enough to get you going and especially for a $50 one-time fee this this thing's dangerous man this thing's good um but yeah the thing that I want to bring up that is mind-blowing if you're an art student or even if you're a pro and you just want to save a little bit of time check this out so you saw how we had the cool swatches of color here and we're like man I named this Warhammer Age of Sigmar Whenever I did my painting for uh, just a practice for Warhammer, um, I did, I used the Age of Sigmar color palette. So what does that mean? I looked at some of my favorite art and imported the colors straight up. Perfect example. Let me show you. If I come over here, um, this is a little options menu right here. If I want to create a color palette from an image, I'm going to click this, select my image. We're going to go back to our old friend Randy Vargas's stuff. Now, how many colors do you want? Do you just want five colors? And this kind of shows your value ranges right here. Um, usually, I go up to about 60, which is probably more than you need. But let's do 64 colors. And then click Create. Here's your color palette. Like, what? That, <laughs> the moment I learned that this had that, this is a killer, dude. It's a killer. You have automatic color harmony. I'm actually making a premium tutorial right now about limited palettes. What better than to use a piece of art that you love so much and use the colors from it to make your own thing? You're going to learn more. You're going to, like, 
I can't believe it. Like, that's how easy it is. And it does the work. But once again, it's the algorithm. It, it takes that. It looks at the pixels and it looks at the density and how many do you need? What's the range value? All that stuff. And it makes you a color. Uh, it makes you a color palette. And so you'll see right here, there's a lot of the muted colors. These beautiful, like, very close to each other. Just gorgeous, muddy. Oh, I love these are where I live. Like, I love the grays. I love the subtle shifts. The but so you can see already I'm starting to act more excited about color because I can just import a color palette. Um, it has cool blending stuff. It has cool blending modes. So we're starting to get more painterly. It still uses algorithms, but it gets more painterly. So that's Affinity Photo. Let's see. The next one would probably be, I would say, probably Sketchbook. Um, which, to be totally honest with you, I feel bad. Uh, I haven't used Sketchbook in a long time. But, I say a long time, it's been like two months. <laughs> which for an artist, when you paint every single day, it's a long time. Um, this is more, uh, instead of thinking it like mechanical, think of it more like draftsmanship. Think of it more like um, if you want to get set perspectives. Now, a lot of these do have perspective grids. But, this is very much a like uh if you want to do this sort of work um you, you can do some draftsman -y stuff uh you can do set rulers which is really cool um to where all of your lines will be right here squish it down a little bit so a lot of symmetrical shapes and stuff, but you still also have your uh, kind of your paintbrush stuff. So if we have, uh, once again, it's a little stampy, um, but there's not as many options as something like Affinity. So this is why I put this as a little bit more painterly, not because it is more painterly, but just because it's has a little less options, um, so you're not so bogged down with the algorithms and stuff like that, but you get cool smudge brushes. Uh, you get cool like eraser tools, different deals, neat brush engine stuff. Um, the cool thing about Sketchbook, completely free, completely free. So if you're wanting to dabble, if you're more of kind of the vector art, illustrative, you'd like to do some stuff from magazines, um, editorial illustration, this might be in your wheelhouse. Sketchbook might be your way to go, um, at least to try out. It's free. I mean, all you're really spending is your time. Um, and you can make gorgeous work. In Sketchbook, it does the ebbs and flows and, you know, oh, it has the color wheels and then um, kind of keeps things that certain uh, your values stay locked in and you can do the color picker and make your custom swatches and um, you can do something like this. And then, you know, there's a pencil tool, uh, you know, markers. Um, oh, maybe I should maybe I should move my webcam so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so it, it, down here you have your kind of radial menus where you can check between your pencils, your airbrushes, uh, like a paintbrush. So we have our paintbrush here. Um, we have this. So, you know, smeary, cool looking um, stuff. It blends automatically. So you can make some really cool um, images just using... Um, just using the sometimes it's better to have limited tools that, that way if you don't have that you know paralysis by analysis you're, you're not looking at hundreds and hundreds of brushes and oh get a filter through this and what's this and oh the mixer brush but how does that change and what's the smudge tool you don't run into all that whenever you have something that just gives you good solid brushes good tools like rulers perspective grids warp tools I mean, at the end of the day, really, what more do you need? Uh, you can make it work with what you got, you know. Cool thing about this as well, Sketchbook is also free for tablets. So if you have an iPad, if you have kind of a touch screen phone, uh, the pen, I know I have my Samsung, the Galaxy with the pen. 
um, free, totally free. Um, and the files work well together. I don't think you can actually do imports of Photoshop brushes and stuff. I haven't messed around with it too much. Uh, but you kind of got what you need here. Um, now, I did a quick one through this. Like I said, I don't use Sketchbook a lot lately because I have my, my, my go-tos, right? So, so far, what we've looked at, so we have Photoshop, we have Affinity Photo, then we have Sketchbook. Um, the next one I want to bring up is going to be Metabang. So Metabang, once again, is free. It, it, the, this one is also free. I haven't used a lot of Metabang. Um, everything looks fine. Like, it's, it does a lot of stuff. I've seen some incredible artwork made with Metabang. But it, it's... It's one of those that once you get in kind of a separate workflow and specific stuff. Now, this is a uh, different contest and it has a really cool like art community. If you're into the um, animation, the manga, the, uh, the anime style, um, more of the illustrative flat color type looks, this seems to be what a lot of their tutorials and brushes are made for is making um, kind of manga, which is funny. We're going to talk about Clip Studio, which used to be called Manga Studio. But uh, this is, if your heart is in this place, in kind of the more illustrative, bright colors, things like that, I think Metabang will do you a lot of good favors. Um, yeah, how to draw a water balloon pattern. Um, so different walks of life, a different type of deal. You have your community built into it. That way you can share stuff, get likes, get feedback. Really cool. Um, so if I go to File, New, let's do the same thing. 1,000 by 1,000, okay. So we have this. So brush controllers, scatter strength, particle size, particle randomizations. Um, so let's do, let's just get ourselves um, acrylic brush. And it looks like instead of having a lot of different brush, I don't know, like brush packs per se, you do an edit based off their base brushes for an acrylic brush. So let's say we have our acrylic brush. Um, we have kind of this deeper, richer blue here. Um, I like the way it feels. Um, you know, if you want to blur some edges, um, you also got your cool soft brush, airbrush tools. Let's do wet watercolor. Um, oh, that's interesting. So if you actually look, you can see the pattern of it. So once again, I think we're working with something that's a little stampy, but nothing wrong with that. Um, smudge tools, um, cool. So what you can do is you probably, the size right here and probably intensity, I bet right here. Um, yeah, so if you wanna come in, you wanna blur some of these corners, make it a little more painterly, go for it. Uh, but, but, but here I would probably use, watercolor is good. This reminds me of the smooth round, uh, the hard round and soft round from Photoshop. So if you're coming at it from that angle, I think you got something. Good here. Yeah, I like that brush. That brush feels good. Feels nice. Gonna move that in. Yeah. Dude, that's pretty dope. <laughs> you know, may, like I don't use this a lot just because I have my go-tos, but that's that's a pretty good brush. I like that. Um, it's flowy. It feels good. It, you, you know, you have control. You can, um, you know, color mixing level. 100 if you compliment what's compliment hold on see now now you got me going now you got me uh <laughs> in here um let's let's kind of do that just to see what happens yeah i like that brush quite a bit man nice you just a basic watercolor i didn't change any properties about it let's look at the acrylic in that same oh, okay so that's more opaque it's going on a lot more confidently um which is good. So let's say you had like that right here. You want to bring that in. Then you want to kiss it a little bit with the other one. If you do that watercolor right there. Um, and then if you do, let's say there's that. And then the opacity is down here. Kind of mix this. And then if you want to smudge. All right. Sure, I'll take it. Um, once again, free. All it takes is your time, right? Um, so you got some color tools here. Um, 
it, it, this looks a little bit like you would learn it, you would have to learn this language you would have to learn the language of metabang paint um because they probably call things different things and okay what what is this like in photoshop and what's it called in metabang you might have that but if you're just starting out i mean this this looks powerful and it looks powerful even if you've been going at it for a while um, but yeah, you have your brush sizes, different layers, your blendings. Um, so you have your multiplies, ads, overlays, screens, soft light. Some good stuff, man. So yeah, let's put you over here, Metamang. All right, all right. I, I see you, I see you. Um, Rebel. Rebel is a really interesting one, man. So I'm actually going to open this one because... I'm not good with it yet. Rebel, for me, is taking... It's taken a little bit of time to kind of come to terms with. So whenever I work traditionally, I work, um, I work with open body, heavy body acrylics. So, you know, I, I have a daughter, uh, we have a small dog, we have, we, we have a lot of goings on in, in the house. So I don't want to have a lot of like oils and, and and turpentine style things and alkalids sort of you know uh that sort of stuff around the house too much and also i i don't i just don't want the fumes around i just don't want that so i usually go with acrylics um what rebel seems to be really really good at is watercolor um so let's go let's just make our standard yeah 1500 by 1500 sure why not um some really cool stuff here. So all you're going to see here is a list of tools. You got your some filters. You have your color balances, hue saturation. If you need to invert a white to alpha, black to alpha. Um, but bare bones is not. It, it's that's misleading. Um, it may not look like you have a ton of options, but you do. And the way they kind of work all together. So for perfect example, if I got a watercolor here. And I go to a moppy brush, um, and then I kind of get this. You know, this is full pressure that I'm working at right here. Um, so let's say I have a linear watercolor brush right here. And then you get a filbert, the same thing. So depending on the pressure, you're going to get different textures, things like that. Your basic round you're going to have. And then, of course, your mops right here. Gonna blend it a little bit, your flat brushes, um, your splatters, which is always pretty cool. The second splatter right here. Um, you have your different loading and you have your different water densities. But here you have, so let's say um, you have your permanent brush, which is gonna be purely opaque. Here is your normal brush, which is gonna have a little bit of that viscosity um, to it or a little bit of that wetness. A dirty brush, which means it's going to continue to pick up color um, of what you have. So if we do a linear brush, bring in the blue, bring in more blue, bring in some of the orange. This isn't really a self cleaning brush. It's going to get inferred and in information based on everything that's come before it. So now that brush has a little bit of that black, a little bit of that blue, a little bit of that orange. Um, and then over here, you have your clean brush which is just, there's nothing on it. There's nothing on the brush. There's a limited number of undo steps for this project. That's fine. Um, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so basically you just have a brush that has nothing but water on it. And what is that going to do whenever you come through and start mixing these things up? Another really cool thing is if you just have water, you're going to notice where water is on this canvas. So let's say I have a sponge here and I am going to come in and add water to different areas and then a wet brush kind of right here to add that right there. Um, perfect. And then let's say we got that right here. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, so we have our sponge. So if we want to absorb some water, we want to take some water out. You basically get like a wet sponge. So here's some dry stuff right here now. Um, it's almost like a mask. Um, what, what are you what, what are you looking for in it right there? Uh, gotcha. So now let's try something like this. Now 
This is crazy. This is a blow dryer. This is a blow dryer. So if you have uh, places that you want to set as watercolor, you can blow dry them, um, which is just insane to me. Like, that's just such an insane, <laughs> like, it doesn't even make sense necessarily. Uh, I mean, it does, but let's say, okay, so now we have, um, this is more of the acrylic brush type stuff. If we bring the size up, um, you have this. But then what happens if you come in and you want to add some water here? You can also do some smudges, um, smudge one, smudge two. They got some really cool looking smudge brushes. But now you're, what you're seeing here, there is a little bit of this lag. Whenever you're coming through it, you know, I'm rocking 12 gigs of RAM. It's not the best computer, but dedicated graphics cards, stuff like that. Once you start getting to bigger things, the engine is so specific that it's actually going to render out a lot of that stuff. Um, and then like soft brush with blenders, it works a little bit faster, but still. Um, now, if we're going to sponge some of this out, let's add some back in. So we got that water right here. And then we're going to blow dry. And what that does is that just kind of settles some of this, some of these colors in. So if I come into here, it's not necessarily blending, but what it's doing, it's kind of, it's probably kind of hard to see on this right here. Um, let's do watercolor. Let's do the ton of water on this brush. Let's go filbert. Um, so yeah, you have these wet, wet brushes. And as you can see here, the more water you add, it's literally growing. Like. Check this out. Look at that. So if you set it here, you get that blow dryer. Now this side, now see what's starting to happen? It's starting to warp. It's starting to blow dry a little bit. It's starting to get in there. So you're getting some truly crazy looks. So I'm not, I don't know how to use watercolor. I mean, clearly. But <laughs> if you're wanting the most true to life watercolor, drippy, controly, uh, you know, and then if you want to add more water, I think what ends up happening is you add the more water, you got the filbert right here, you got the load, you got the pressure. Let's do another round. Let's bring in, let's say this color. Let's, if we got this, let's do the cyan -y looking see what i mean now it's just off to the races right um wait why is it not what mode am i in right now why is this no oh yeah duh because i'm on clean brush let's go on to normal brush and check that out check out what's going on here it's really starting to blend in and do these beautiful mixtures. Um, I've worked with a few paintings, but this was probably eight months ago-ish. Um, this is one that you'd want to spend like a day just to learn the functionality. You're not going to get an exact workflow because the whole point of this is to be a little bit spontaneous, a little bit sporadic. But I kind of dig that. I can, like we talked about it. You know, this is not mathematics. Art and painting is not math. It's a jazz. It's all about feel. It's all about momentum. It's you know, uh, really cool. Just a really neat idea, right? So I mean, you could argue if you're into watercolor, this might be the most painterly thing you can get. But for me. Once again, I'm worried too much about the tools and not about the expressive the painting part of it um, i'm too worried about well what setting is this and what's the airbrush doing and what's the mixture doing, blah, 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 blah. which you know if i spend more time with this to be totally fair that might go away i might know exactly what i need pop bow bow get it get it get the color drop it down add the water blow dry it bam 
but as of right now, I'm thinking too much. And Zach Wild, he's a really good guitar player. He played for Ozzy Osbourne. He played for Black Label Society. He has a saying, you know, because he does crazy shred stuff. And people ask him, hey, man, how do you do that? What are you thinking about? And he's like, listen, brother, if you're thinking, you're stinking. And I always remembered that, that you want it to be as natural and forthcoming as possible. So if you're thinking, you're stinking. On this one, I'm a little stinky just because I'm thinking too much. I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I, you know, I'm in the weeds, as it were. But I want to give this more of a fair shake. I love what I see. You, there is no other art thing that I have found that gives you that. That gives you this. That is glorious. That, that mwah, chef's kiss on that. So Rebel, it's a one-time fee. Uh, let's add you over here, Bubba. So now let's get into some nitty gritty. So we had Camillo ask about this. Um, so Clip Studio is our next one. <laughs> we are recording this on December the 9th, 2020. Tomorrow, literally tomorrow, Clip Studio is coming out with its winter update and it's about to change the game. And what I mean by that is Clip Studio is adding two features. It's adding a time lapse. So an automated time lapse do a lot like a Procreate or Infinite Painter if you're used to tablets. I believe it's bringing the time lapse thing to the desktop version as well. But the big one and the one that people are already talking about, like, whoa, brother, you're able to import your Photoshop brush packs now. Not now, tomorrow, I should say. For the winter update, you can bring in ABR. You might have to do some tweaks and stuff, but they're adding what's called dual brush, um, which is part of the brush engine that Adobe uses that everybody loves a lot. So they're adding that functionality and native ABR support. So you can bring in your brush packs. So any of my brush packs, you get any of your kind of heroes Photoshop brush packs, you can bring into Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint is a one-time fee of like $60, $70 ish. I may even get that wrong. I bought it so long ago. I can't remember. I should have looked that up. Um, but it's a one-time fee. So something that, uh, <laughs> there, there is a, um, a splash screen that comes up with Clip Studio. It's on another monitor because I've used it on Warhammer stuff and I cannot show you all the Warhammer stuff. <laughs> it's still under NDA. Um, but let me just open up. So it gives you um, something that Clip Studio has that I think is crazy cool is it has some built-in 3D functionality. So you can actually import a character, pose it the way you want it, light it the way you want it, um, which is great in a pinch. It's great. Um, but Clip Studio used to be called Manga Studio. And they, it would, they primarily had stuff like the perspective grids, the layout stuff for making um, web comics publishable, manga, um, you know, just any sort of comics. And then they started dabbling, I want to say probably six years ago, seven years ago, into more of, uh, here we go. This thing's kind of a beast, by the way. Um, program's kind of a beast. But um, started dabbling more into actual painting. Um, here, I'm going to, oh, this is why it's taking a while. Okay, I was wondering why it's taking slower. I just updated the new version, so there's even a newer version coming out tomorrow, like we talked about, but I have the newer version. I was working like four or five versions back, and I still loved it, um, but but basically, the, the, they went from Manga Studio to Clip Studio Paint, so they really started embracing the painterly, vivid, natural brushstroke engine type stuff, so if I come to new... Let's do here. So yeah, you can see here, um, if you want to do like a comic layout, it already has this. 5 millimeter, 600 DPI, monochrome colors, the frequency, what's your size for pages. Um, you know, just basic, uh, your normal comic setting stuff right here. Um, if you wanted to make more of an animation, what's your output, um, what's your resolution. Really cool stuff. So they have this built in. I'm just, I'm an old, old fart. So all I do is paint. That's all I really do. Uh, so let's do this. Let's do, um, yeah, 1920 by 1080 wallpaper size. That's fine. Now, if you are to go on the Clip Studio route, 
I highly, highly, highly recommend enough so that I think it's actually a requirement. I will consider this a requirement. My good friend, uh, Ray Frendon, um, I, I remember interviewing him back in Nitro Beard days. This is old days, kids. Um, back in 2008. So 12 years ago is when I met um, Ray. And he's done work for a whole bunch of people, including Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all that stuff. Um, so there's, there's two people. Sorry, I'm dragging a thing over here. Something I recommend enough that I actually consider it a requirement is his Clip Studio paintbrush pack. You get over 800 brushes, bro. 800 pencil paint inking tools, special effects tools. Um, there's so many. There's so many brushes, and he updates this thing all the time, and you get the updates free of charge, man. You get 325 ratings, perfect, perfect. Like, <laughs> he is a working, he's, he's probably your artist's favorite artist. I'll put it that way. Ray Frendon is a beast, and he has incredible stuff. And you'll notice that I have Ray Frendon's brush. I made a dedicated one just for his concept Craig, so like Craig Mullins style brushes. Um, you have a blender, you have a dry brush, opaque, a light wash, a scatter brush, a simple brush, a sketcher version, a stringy version, the washes, the watercolor, the wet, and then just your basic brush. This is all variations of the same brush, meaning I can come in here um, with like, okay, I'm going to come in here with just the concept Craig. I'm going to start painting. And then let's say I want that same brush, but I want it a little bit more of a wash. Then I want a wet brush, bring that up, more of that wet, smeary brush, stringy, so you have that nice, like, rake look, sketchers, so if you want that nice traditional pencil feel with that brush, you can come in and do that. Just a simple brush version of it, not a lot of texture, just kind of the shape and a lot of opacity, a lot of good wetness. Your scatter brush right here, so you get some of this beautiful jitter and scatter. Your standard opaque version of the brush, which keeps the exact brush tip intact. Gets that. Your light wash, of course, right here. So it's a little bit lighter if you just want to come in and kind of do some nice, it's almost like salty water that you're adding to it. Your dry brush which is very pastel -y. It's very, um, very chalky almost. And then your blender brushes, which, woo -hoo -hoo, his blender brushes, my friend, are the best in the business. Um, God, this is such a good, this is just the concept Craig variations. Let me, let me, let me show you. Let me, let me bring this up a little bit. Let me, let me bam. Let me bam right here. All right, let's go into the old. This is just standard, just standard brushes right here. Let's go look at this pack. Oh, what's all this? Wet Chet, Bitter Ritter, um, Bristle Bob, Chard Lee, Chalky Chucky. He has the best names as well. Um, yeah, this one's called Photoshop. <laughs> like faux, like fake, like Photoshop. But I'll tell you what, this is a dead ringer for the Photoshop standard brush freaking dead ringer man like it is exactly right and he's done the work he's put in the time he's done the work that's the best fifteen dollars you're gonna spend on clip studio i swear by it this turned into an ad for ray instead of an ad for clip studio but clip studio is just so much fun um it also has really good like perspective tools uh you can do scale rotates you got all this but you got your basic rulers um, perspective rulers, symmetrical rulers, rulers, pins. Um, so very much if you're into kind of the, the, um, let me, let me actually hide this. Let me come in make a new layer. Um, let's say we have our, um, pencils right here. Clip actually works super well as a sketchbook app. Um, I mean, if you look, let's zoom in here. Look at that beautiful texture. That feels, I mean, here's oil pastel on canvas. 
Here's oil pastel medium. And these, once again, these are the Ray Friendin ones, but let's say you're just using the standards. The standards are great too. So here's the standard charcoal brush. You have a good crayon brush right here, some pastel. You have your standard chalk. Let's go over to pencil. You have a rough pencil, which is right here. You have your designer pencil, which I like because this is very much like uh, if you have a mechanical pencil, um, but they actually have one called mechanical pencil, which it's a little bit lighter. This is really good for your base sketching. Um, a colored pencil, so you have a little bit fatter of a tip, um, and then lighter pencil right here. Darker pencil, so you got your HBs, your your, your soft, your um, yeah rough pencil, real pencil. These come standard, man. Pastels, yeah. We get the noise brushes. You just standard noise brush. Beautiful. Same thing for these brushes. Let's say um, I use the gouache brushes a lot, and these just come built in. You don't even have to buy these. Um, the gouache detail, beautiful, gorgeous um, looks that they have. And then the gouache flat. So whenever I was doing like James Gurney studies, whenever I was looking at his stuff and trying to replicate it based on his tutorials, I would use the gouache brushes because he's very much a fan of gouache. Um, and then, of course, you can do like oil paints. So the oil paint gouache brush, which is kind of a weird mix thing, but look at that. It's a beautiful, it picks up whatever your background color is and then morphs it. You get this nice, beautiful, like that's a light touch, heavy touch, super light touch right here. So you have total control. You have the gouache blender. So you come in. Um, I actually had the best luck making Jama Jurabev style sketches in Clip Studio than I did in anything else. And I bought every brush pack that dude made, man. Um, I have it in Photoshop. I have all this stuff. But I felt like I got that beautiful, natural look in Clip. Um, it's great. I, I love it. Um, of course, on a majority of these, you can also import photos. You can do photo bashing. You can do that stuff. It's just uh, going back to um, yeah, going back to Photoshop, that's kind of its bread and butter which is why I haven't discussed it a lot. If you want the Photoshop, if you want the uh, photo bash style work, I still think Photoshop's your best bet or Affinity Photo, to be fair. Um, so if you want the one-time fee, go for that. But we're starting to get into the art part here, man. We're you know what I mean? Like we're, we're moving and shaking. We had Rebel with the watercolors. But the versatility of Clip Studio cannot be, cannot be sold enough. Um, super versatile. And here's another, um, <laughs> here is another, let me bring this up. My computer's, it's like, why do you have all these things open, man? What's going on? Um, if you need to know the power of Clip Studio, Dave Raposa just uses Clip Studio. It's all used. He, he said bye-bye to Photoshop. He was like, peace. This is a standard. I don't like it. Um, and needless to say, I would say Dave Raposa, uh, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's pretty, he's a smidgen, you know, he's all right. Uh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> like, are you kidding? Like, we, this is the power clip studio. Like, I was showing you some brushes and smudges. You want to see some work, dude. Look at Dave Raposa stuff, man. Like, God, what? You want to make stuff like that? You can get Clip Studio and make stuff like that. Come on. Come on. Like, <laughs> do this. So I could just look at the rest. Of, okay, anyway. I mean, the power of Clip Studio cannot be overstated. Like, it, it's. Especially tomorrow. Tomorrow they're about to change the game again, dude. They're going to bring out the ABR brushes. Like, what? You, oh. It's a, this thing's a monster. It's a monster. Um, if I can't make up my mind on what to use, I either go for Clip Studio or, um, or Paintstorm. The next one on the list is one that people are going to be like, what is Krita? Dude, Krita, over the past year, has been whooping ass. It's completely free. Completely free. Um, 
It's open source. We got people working on it all the time. Here is a sneak peek of something I'm working on right now. Um, I wanted to make a cool like Magic the Gathering esque uh, archer picture, um, and I'm actually using Krita to do it because I, I, I'm recording. I'm going to record this process and make it a time lapse for a future video. But um, you can see, um, I actually do recommend. There's something called the Digital Atelier. And I, I I think it's like ten bucks, twelve bucks for the brush pack. I do recommend it because it kind of has everything you need. Um, it, it's made by Ramon. I can't remember his last name, but he's he's very much a, a Krita artist through and through. But he's made stuff like oils, and there's uh, you know your palette knives and your oil blocking. So let's say if I were to come into here and let's say oh I want to actually block in some values here. Um, let me get and see, you see a little water symbol right here. The little tiny water symbol means it's a wet brush, um, which means it's going to blend naturally. You don't have to do any mixers or anything with it. Um, so let's say we're going to just put in some values over here. We've got this good little uh, value picker. Um, but Krita, and the only reason it's running slightly slower is because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten art programs open all doing stuff. So my computer's freaking out. Um beautiful brushes. Beautiful brushes in the digital atelier. Um I'm actually going to be releasing my brush pack. My brush pack's very standard, very easy um to use. I have the pencil Guess what that does? It draws stuff. Um, <laughs> I have kind of the basic brush, your basic wet brush. So your basic wet blend. Um, so if I'm going to come in here, solid brushes. Um, but then let's actually get more of the glazy look right here. This brush actually reminds me of the Concept Craig brush from uh, Clip Studio. So if we did something like that and then we came over here and then, oh, we need to come in here and like, oh, we need his face to be the most majestic looking thing. So let's let's actually come over here and uh, frame his face. That way it's more of a focal point to something like this. Um, something that krita does that i love and they've really upped their game lately is the blender brushes so you have your wet uh kind of your your, your palette knife wet knife so you can see that beautiful looking press and the push you're pushing paint along um you also have your blender stub which is great then you have a blender rake so if you want some cool grit to some of these blends, um, you have that right there. But then you also have your kind of dry brush erosion sort of looks to them. And as you can start to see, and here's just a beautiful dry brush, almost like a, what's it called? A scramble? I'm trying to remember the name of the actual, just getting a dry brush and putting a dry brush over and using, using it to push stuff around. Um, or scrambler or something like that. Um, but you can see there's a lot of ebb and flow to how these things kind of start working together. And it's really, really cool. And this one uh, is actually from the Digital Atelier. It's a blender edge brush. Look at that, man. Like, it brings in some dope looking stuff. Oh, God, that's so good. Look at that. So if you wanted that nice Renaissance background, guess what? done <laughs> you know what i mean like it's done it's cloudy it's muddy it's nasty it's dirty oh you could, you just i love it so then you're gonna bring in let's bring in like a darker sapia tone type thing to it um so if i come in here i add some wet uh brush of that color wet brush of that color then let's go a little bit darker same thing and then we're going to come in and do that. Look at that, man. So good. It's adding those grays in there. It's adding some of that cloud, some of that mess. The more I'm using Krita, the more fun I have. 
Uh, it used to not be that way. I used to be like, yeah, it's free. It's okay. Uh, but now, don't sleep on Krita, man. Krita is it's constantly changing itself. It's constantly improving its brush engine. It's good. I mean, it just is. Um, so there's Krita right there. Let me actually come in and close some of these because <laughs> I really want to show what um, these next two have in common. So these next two are the ones I use the most. Um, I, I use these next two programs the most. I know we've been going for over an hour, but I hope you're finding something cool and fun to hang out and work with. Um, yeah, it's going to, sorry, it's going to take my computer a second um, to kind of get rid of a lot of these deals right here. But the next two, okay, we'll close out, we'll close out a few more. We'll close out Krita. Um, do you want to save? No, nah, I'm going to resketch that anyway, uh, for the live recording. Um, this is Paintstorm Studio. Out of all of these, Paintstorm Studio is the one I'm using the most. I use it more than Photoshop. I use it more than Clip Studio. I use it more than Art Rage. I use it more, which we haven't looked at yet, but we will. Um, Paintstorm Studio, in my opinion, it's $20. It is the best mix of giving you options and letting you paint. A perfect example, a perfect thing for this is look at this mixer tool that I have over here. I actually use this on a painting. Let me bring this up. Um, I did a Zorn palette study. With this exact palette. This is what I made with it. Um, this took me about an hour or so. I just wanted to see how well this mixer tool worked like mixing br uh, brushes on a uh, on a camera on a uh, what am I, a mixer like a what, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> palette. Palette. A palette. Um, I promise I'm a painter. I promise you. Uh, so you have your actual workable palette that you can malleable as it's mixery. Uh, you can get this color and mix it in with that color. Um, and this is what I made. I only used four colors. Um, and the four colors I used are the Zorn palette. So you got your ivory black, you got your titanium white, you got your yellow ochre, and you got your vermilion red. So vermilion, it could also be a scarlet or a cadmium red light. Um, this is a whole different thing, which we're going to talk about in a video I'm recording right now about limited color palettes. Uh, there's some argument on what Zorn used, but this is close enough, right? And I wanted to make a painting just with those four colors. That's it. Um, and what you can see here is, uh, yeah, I would literally come in here, hold Alt, color pick, get some of this black. And let's say I just needed um, to kind of warm that up a little bit with some of this. Um, and then add a little bit more black on top. And then um, we have that right here. So then you can come in and all these beautiful mixers, you can actually color pick. Now I am using my uh, platinum pack. So if you buy my uh, platinum brush pack, you're actually going to get this full um, list right here that I'm using for Paintstorm Studio. So these are the exact brushes that I use. Um, true story. Every single one of my Warhammer pieces that I'm working on right now that have been approved and stuff, and they're going to be in the Forgotten Players uh, or Forgotten Systems Players Guide. Uh, I want to say it's going to come out by the end of this year, maybe early next year. Um, all of them were done in Paintstorm Studio, every single one. Um, the, the you know Games Workshop and Cubicle Seven wanted more of a painterly approach, so I wanted to have something that I knew I could control. But it would look like it was all organic. And that's where uh, that's where this really came in. Um, so this is a little stampy, but with all of the other features and the way that the mixers and the blenders work, it is perfect. It's I, just the feel of this. And here's a round mixer brush. So you can mix on the palette. You can mix on your canvas. So I'm going to bring in this. 
I'm gonna bring that in. And then you can just start color picking from what you already have down here. So really you could mix right here on the canvas and then start color. Oh, and I'm gonna introduce that right there and then that over here and then grab this and then smear that. But let's say I also want to blend it. So I got my bristle blender. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger. You have these beautiful nuances on how hard you're pressing. You're going to get a different amount of blend. You see, so that is kind of a streaky deal, but then if you press pretty hard and come in, now it's almost like a Q-tip. You have that Q-tip and you're rubbing through it. Um, you can do, I have like some ink texture brushes, some basic brushes right here. Uh, the Sketcher brush, which I absolutely love because it feels like kind of a nice wet pencil. Um, a flat wet. Look at that towel, oh my God. That, <laughs> that's my jam, dude. So this, this, oh, it's just, oh, it's just perfect. It's bliss, man. Like, I love this program so freaking much just because of the way the colors blend automatically. I didn't have to alter any of the brushes really. I just changed some shapes, some a little bit of flow and jitter and opacity and stuff like that, but nothing crazy. Um, just the way colors work together is good. It's so good. I can't believe that it's only 20 bucks. Um, you know, I can do like a flat mixer um, that's pulling all the colors from around it. Uh, just a beautiful, and then your erasers, of course, have different properties as well. But then um, splatter and texture is great because like if I needed to add grit or grime to something, this is what I would do. So let's say, um, let's actually come over here. Let's fill this with kind of a nice kind of off. Um, let's go to edit. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Is it image? Where's it at? Oh, fill all. So you have kind of this nice deal right here. Let's say you have some smooth brushes. Um, you, know, you have that round mixer right there, and then you also have your draw blend flat opacity, because even that, now you're already starting to get into that Renaissance era, kind of darker palette sort of stuff. Um, then if I needed to go from something like this to kind of splatter it out a little bit, And I promise you, just by doing this, going on the edges of these brushes and working like that, I promise you, if I make a painting like this and do my edges in this way, I guarantee I will get people online saying, what brush did you use? What brush did you use? But you're going to get that a lot. If your brush works good, you're going to get people asking you what brush you used <laughs> every time. Um, that's a great litmus test. So it's a good way to kind of, so we have that, and then let's go in, let's get that blender. So you're noticing I'm not really worried too much about what the formal, like, what's the tool and what's my, oh, uh, you, you know, what's the opacity on that one? And I don't care. Um, this is why I use this so much is because it has such a perfect feel that I, I, I just love it. I, I don't think about settings. I don't think about brushes. I don't think about any of the logistics to make something come to life. I just paint. I just get a color. I paint. I blend it. I, I smear it. I, it's the best. Like paint. I cannot state enough how much I love Paintstorm. It's, this is my go-to. This is the one that I will load up every single day. If only just to kind of mess around on a canvas like this. It's fun. It's just, it brings that fun, the joy of painting, as Bob Ross would call it. This brings it to me, you know. Um, and then, the heavy hitter. The heavy hitter. If we're talking about, if you want me to go into my closet and get a canvas and get some paints and work, but I don't want to do that because I'm lazy, I will load up Art Rage. 
every single time I'm actually going to show you guys, um, I'm working on a, um, I'm working on a cool little peacock, um, picture. My, my, my stepmom loves peacocks. I'm making her this. I'm going to do a big print of it. I think this one's going to be like 14 by 24 or something like that. Um, that way she can hang it in her home. Um, if I want to do quote unquote traditional painting for prints, I usually use art rate. And so let me move, I'm going to move my, um, let me move it right up here. So the reason why is everything is done through this radial menu down here. Um, Art Rage has the best canvas structure I've ever seen. It has the best realistic shine and sheen of paint on top of a canvas that I've ever seen. A lot of people will think this is gimmicky. It can be. It can look pretty gimmicky. But it can also, I've gotten more compliments on brushwork using Art Rage than anything else I've ever used. Ever. No question. Um, and I only use four main things in this whole piece of software. So, I mean, you have stuff like pastels and crayons and paint rollers. Paint roller is good to get specific, um, colors down. So like, let's say, um, and then each one of these has a different, oh, well, my webcam's still in the way. Let me move it right there. So each one of these brushes has their own set settings and you can make your customized settings if you buy the full version of Art Rage, which I highly recommend. Um, so for my roller, you have thick and smooth, a speckled line, which is a little dirtier. Um, let me like color select here. See what I mean? Like, look at this. Well, once again, freaking webcam. Okay, let's just do it like this. Boom. Um, do you see that texture? You're zooming out, stuff like this. If I put this on an art print, I, I, I swear to you, I promise, because I've done it. I've made art prints with this, with Art Rage. People ask, well, how do you make the print of your traditional painting? How much is the original? There is no original. It's all digital. <laughs> You're like, what? They think I'm lying. Um... So if I want to go to like my oil brushes right here, um, I'm a big fan of Daniel Ibanez. Uh, search him. His name's Mamba Bond. So Bond's brush. Um, he was very kind and gracious enough to um, let me get the settings for his brushes. Uh, me and him talk all the time on Instagram and stuff. He's incredible. He uses. He primarily just uses Art Rage. He's a featured artist for them. And good God in heaven, he is amazing. Um, so Bond's brush. Check this out. So let's say we want to have some nice looking traditional brush stroke stuff. So we're gonna have this, it's kind of hard to see. So let's come over here. I'm gonna take that color. Ooh, you see them clumps? You see them clumps? Right here? That's what you get with Art Rage. Um, it is the coolest, most natural brush style that I've ever seen. See, like right here, if you print this on a canvas, people people have to go up and touch the canvas because they're gonna think that that's impasto. That that is that is there. Um, and then you come out. It's the perfect way to do what I consider, or uh, I've heard it called, ugly painting. To where whenever you zoom in real far. It doesn't look like anything, but once you zoom out, you start seeing it, you know? Um, very much a John Singer Sargent, Anders Zorn. If you're wanting that traditional look, Art Rage is the best in the world. There's no question. There, everything else, in my opinion, is a distant second place. If you want the look of traditional, this is it. The other power that this thing has is your palette knife. So you can load up your palette knife. So how much of the color are you going to load up? So you're smearing around that palette knife um, and it's loading whatever color is underneath it mixed with the color that you have selected. So you can do that with the loading right here. Um, I actually made some uh, knives. So like mine, there's a West Speckle, which is a good blender, and then just a standard West knife. Um, the standard West knife has good amount of loading. So you can actually kind of paint with it. And you can see that I painted with it here for this branch. Um, Kind of get this, kind of bring this in a little bit, add some more 
kind of texture and look to that. Um, so once again, you're noticing that I don't really mess with the options. And the options are kind of, you can auto clean it right here, which I don't have enabled. I want it to be messy. Uh, you can lock the rotation. If you don't lock the rotation, it's gonna go the, the way your uh, mouse is. You see that? So you can actually do shapes with your palette knife. Very, very, very cool. Um, you have a ton of control. And um, then the other one is gonna be this one, kind of the speckle right here. I think this one's called the wet, um, but basically, and this is the standard one, Say I want to go and for that beautiful painting look, let's say we have this stuff down here. Um, you can see I already used it a little bit. But let's say we want these colors to start coming into the greens, but have it look smooth, have it look like we just took a napkin and just kind of blended these colors on a canvas. Oh man, look at that. Like, It's so good. Like I, I love it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and then I'm gonna color uh, pick this, and then the same thing. Like look at those, man. Like look at look at this. Are you kidding? Oh, that's beautiful. Like that's a gorgeous mix. Um, and the great thing is everything. It just works. Like this just works. You, of course, you have pencils. The hard tip pencil literally feels like a real pencil. Um, it, it's outstanding. It really is. Um, but you also have stuff like hard shaders. So you have more of that kind of gritty, gristle stuff right here. Heavy and smooth. So good. Sketcher stuff. And you'll see there's smoothing. Um, a lot of these do have smoothing, by the way, for line art. I forgot to mention that. I don't do line art, if you haven't noticed. Um, probably should. But th you know what I mean? Like, this is, that's, that's our rage, man. Like, oh, give me a good oil brush. Give me a good palette knife and let me blend. And we're off to the freaking races. Um, a perfect example of what um, I, I, I can do in art rage. And, um, hey, Dave Raposa. Um, I'm going to show myself for a minute. Um, let me move this down here. Cool. Whee! So, come right here. My Firefox is upset because I'm doing so much painting stuff. What? Is Art Station down? Holy shit, bro. Oh, okay, never mind. I don't know why I didn't uh, do that. Anyway, um, these two right here, this environment practice right here, um, this was done in Art Rage, entirely in Art Rage, using the oil brush and using the palette knife. That's it. Um, the next one is also Art Rage. And you can tell um, because you can see these blends. You can see that scatter brush. You can see that stuff right here. This was all done in Art Rage. So whenever I feel like painting, I load up Art Rage. Um, it's just, I, it's, it's so good. And people, people all comment like, what brush did you use? Can you give me that brush pack? I'm like, bro, just buy Art Rage, you know? Uh, I want to say Art Rage is 60 bucks, something like that. Um, but yeah, for, if you want the true joy of painting and kind of the, I may do an art rage kind of master class as it were, um, down the line, I still love painting with it. I still want to paint more with it. Uh, but that's really it. So now we have the full list of, um, stuff here. So in order, um, this goes from, I guess the most mechanical. Um, so let me actually do this. Let me come over here. Let me zoom in. We hopefully this works. We okay. So we have like the most mechanical, which is our Adobe Photoshop, um, to the more painterly as you go down the spectrum. So I use all of these, um, some more than others, um, to be totally fair. And yeah, Flame Painter is more of a special effects package, but um, 
there's a lot to love. There's a lot to learn with um, digital art. So it depends on what your goals are. Once again, this is not math. There's no right or wrong here. Um, if you think Sketchbook or Metabang has a better brush engine than ArtRage, mwah, bless you. Like, go for it. I can't wait to see what you make. Um, this is how I use this stuff. I know we've gone a little long, about an hour and 20 um, for this part of it. But hopefully you found something you liked. Um, Really, um, I, what I'll probably try to do is put links to all of these in the description for the video. But just know that digital painting has never been easier to get into. It's never been more fun to get into. Uh, it's all about self-expression. So however you feel would best suit your needs, there's something out there for you. Um, so yeah, if you're wanting to do a photo bash, matte painting style stuff, I highly recommend the Photoshop and the Affinity Photo. Uh, if you're more, if you want to go the traditional painting, if you want to do like still life studies, but digital, Art Rage, Paint Storm, uh, Krita, um, a lot of cool stuff going on. But that's my time. Sorry I took up all yours. <laughs> but hopefully you can either watch this in chunks or kind of check it out, I guess. Um, really cool stuff. It's never been a better time to be an artist, um, in my opinion. And a lot of fun. Um, a lot of cool things to where people don't really understand that, hey, the computer's not going to do the work for you. Sometimes it will on a match color, getting color palettes, stuff like that. There are tools available, but like I always say, is a baker less of a baker because they use a blender, because they use a mixer? No, it's a tool to get you where you need to go faster. Uh, yeah, go out, make awesome stuff. Let me know in the comments what your favorite art program is what's your favorite method what do you like doing the most i want to know um i love talking shop and this is shop trust me this is it i love talking this stuff with fellow artists whether amateur or professional doesn't matter if you're just getting into it for the very first time i recommend sketchbook and Krita. go for it it's free it's free you cannot beat free um if you want the whole hog whole kit and caboodle if you want to spend 10 years of your life learning a thing Go for that Photoshop. Go for that Affinity Photo. If you just want to paint, man, if you just want to get in there, you just want to make some beautiful stuff happen, get yourself Paintstorm Studio. Get yourself some Art Rage or anything in between, man. Uh, that's my time. I'm Wes. You know where to find me. Uh, any questions you have, leave them in the comments. And you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you all real soon. Peace.